Well, hello again, Pastor Ray Barnett here. Glad that you could be with me for another broadcast on God's answers for anxiety and for depression. As always, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Beautiful day. Well, at least it was a beautiful day. Getting cloudy here, and I hear some thunder in the background, so just in case I'm hit suddenly with a storm uh, I've got my umbrella to protect myself of course you're gonna be okay uh, you'll, be, you'll be nice and dry but I won't well let's see how it goes hey you know it's a great great uh, metaphoric application there's a storm somewhere I could hear the thunder I don't know if it's gonna reach us here surrounded by clouds but there is a storm approaching this world and I think those who have a discriminating mind can see that I'm running into many many people who don't seem to seriously question the fact which it is a fact that there's a much trouble in our world and they can see it what many of them don't know and this is where I try to to help out is to supply them with the scriptures that speak about the days in which we live and what is yet to come. The subject is called eschatology. It's a division of Bible prophecy. And what makes the Bible so unique to every other religious book on the planet is that it can accurately predict the future. Now most of Bible prophecy has already been fulfilled in the past in the ministry of course of our Lord Jesus Christ but not all there are still prophecies that have to be fulfilled yet mainly the return of Christ prior to that what Jesus talked about is a great tribulation that's the storm that's the storm that's approaching we see it all over the world Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 speaks about signs and those signs he said would be wars there would be rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places, nation rising up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And for those who are, um, those who doubt the accuracy of Jesus' words, they'll make the argument that there's always been wars, there's always been rumors of wars, there's always been famines, there's always been plagues, and so on and so forth. But there's not always been 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet. That's new. And the technology. And I say that to add a third. We see these things happening all at once. All around the world. Obviously it includes the United States of America where I live. And where many of you live. So, there is a storm approaching. Our subject here, as uh, you know, is one that deals with anxiety depression and mental health disorders and oddly it's not really it's I, I'd say may, maybe more ironically the way to actually rid yourselves of fears plural is to downsize your fears to one the fear of the Lord I think this is a misunderstood doctrine as well because I remember speaking to one person not that long ago and he responded to me and said, I don't think I should fear God. And I said, well, it it's, it's has to be understood in its context. For example, if you work with a power tool, you have to be careful because it can work against you. Obviously, a power tool such as a, um, well, a bandsaw, I don't know why that comes to my mind, uh, uh, any kind of power tool uh, you, you, you could be working with a um, what is it I'm trying to say chainsaw <laughs> you could be working with a chainsaw I knew I'd get it sooner or later a chainsaw a bandsaw any kind of you know power tool and you understand the good that it can do then you and I've seen this again in my many years on the earth here 
I've seen how those tools can work against people. I've seen people lose their fingers. I, when I was in radiology once, I saw a man who came in who, um, whose chainsaw got stuck in the tree and he tried to get it out while he was still up in the tree. When he got it loose from the knot in the branch where he had it, it turned back out again and clicked him or clipped him right in the nose, cut his nose right in half. So, okay, what's that have to do with the fear of the Lord? In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes, Behold the goodness and the severity of God. And he could be both good and severe, depending on where a person stands with God. So, the fear of the Lord is understanding all of the good that God can do and does, at the same time simultaneously understanding the severity of breaking God's laws and how severe that they can be. I shared with you that what the Bible calls sin, which is the breaking of God's commandments and God's laws and God's principles, has affected our entire planet. Everything from the ecosystem to our physical bodies to our brains, to every, it's affected everything. And there we see the severity of God. Obviously, when we look at nature, here I'm by this uh, creek doing this broadcast for you, we see the goodness of God. But He's both simultaneously, because as I've explained to you before, theologically speaking, God is simple. He's both holy and merciful, and yet He is just and holy and, and so on. All these things and the many attributes of God, He's all of these things all at once. So, having said that, the ironic relationship between anxiety, fears, um, well, depression as well, is that if you downsize them to the fear of the Lord, which means you're going to live by the commands of Christ, the commands of God, you, and that's the fear of the Lord, by the way, then you automatically are dismissed from other fears. 1 John 4, 18 and 19. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has torment. He that fears, other things, not, not the Lord. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Again, 1 John, we love him before, because he first loved us. What's the summation of all of the righteousness that the Bible speaks about? Love to God, love to one another. It's the whole thing summed up. There's 31,102 verses in the Bible, and they're summed up in two commandments. Love God with all the heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love one another. Even Jesus said, as I have loved you. So herein lies the solution to overcoming fear, panic attacks, I meant anxiety, um, the, the many things that can occupy our mind at any one given moment in this life. It's largely because of the absence of the love of God, both His love for us, in other words, not knowing it, not accepting it, not recognizing it, not acknowledging it, and then in reciprocation, our love for Him. That's the fear of the Lord. It's understanding the goodness of God. It's also understanding, as I mentioned, the severity of God if we work against these commandments. Gravity, for example, is a good thing. But if you decide to walk off a building that's five stories tall, it's not a good thing. It's working against you. It's a very simple concept that, for some odd reason, seems to escape the, um, the intellect of many, many people. And it's very simple. Oddly enough, so many of the biblical principles, or the principles we find in the Bible, are actually very simple and easy to understand. Not always easy to accomplish, but easy to understand. They're not... Uh, precisely all that complex. Admittedly, Bible prophecy, especially in the area of eschatology, can be a bit more involved and takes a lot more study and, and work. But the basic principles of the Bible are, are simple, though at times they're not easy. So, to overcome fear, it's much like the uh, adage, fighting fire with fire. You know, for many, many years I never understood what that term meant. I, I really didn't. It just didn't seem to make sense to me when I was when I was young. I mean, when I was little. Then you see a forest fire, and this fire is a, a conflagration. It's taken over so many acres of, of forest. 
And what firefighters do, as you know, is they'll create a ring of fire around this fire so that this land has no more, um, no more fuel. There's no more trees, there's no more brush, there's no more wood, there's, there's nothing there. So it's, it's burnt and burnt over ground. By the time the fire gets to that place, another fire set by man and uh, calculated to stop the fire has been in its place or put in its place. So we fight fire with fire, or men do anyway, uh, people do, firefighters do, and we fight fear with fear. We trade the many fears and anxieties that we have and downsize it, as I mentioned, to just one, the fear of the Lord. It's very evident when you look at someone, watch their behavior, who has the fear of the Lord and who does not. Let me go back to gravity. Many young, young children, um, my, my wife and I are, by, uh, well, February of this coming year, we'll have 13 grandchildren. We have five children, and we'll have 13 grandchildren. Having raised five, and now being around toddlers, infants, and the children, grandchildren of all ages, especially the young, they don't understand the principles and the laws of the universe, principles and laws of God. So you have to have the constant supervision of father, mother, or grandfather, grandfather, and whoever else is a guardian at the moment, to make sure the child does not violate a principle of physics, a principle of the universe, which in the end are all the principles of God. But then there comes a time when you're old enough to understand what is harmful and what is not harmful. So it, it escapes me sometimes why people just can't seem to figure out the simplicity of this doctrine known as the fear of the Lord. That if you will be able to, and let me use the expression, play by the rules, then you're not going to have the repercussions that come with violating God. Now, you may be asking, well, I, I've had anxiety since I was a kid, you say, or my nervous symptoms have been with me as long as I can remember. And there isn't any real uh, you, you can't think of any real reason of something that you did, you know, something you did wrong, which is, which is the case. As I mentioned, sin has permeated every part of our lives, every part of creation. And in your case, and in many, many people's cases that have nervous symptoms, the problem is these, uh, the nervous system is overly sensitive. So that means you're experiencing these symptoms and you don't know why. And I, I'm here to tell you that in great majority of cases, it's not a fault of yours. It's not a moral failure. It's um, just, let me say it this way. When you really look at people's lives, everybody has something wrong with them. I mean, I mean, I mean physically. Uh, you know, one person has issues with their stomach. One person has issues with uh, maybe it's their muscles. Another has uh, people that are born with heart conditions from, from birth. In the case of many people with nervous symptoms that have anxiety attacks, panic attacks, and so on, not all cases, but I think the majority, is that the nervous system is very sensitive from birth. And most of uh, people that I've met that have nervous symptoms are both intelligent and also sensitive, or sensitive people. They're sensitive to a lot of things. And this is coming from not just these, the soul or the mind, but it's coming from the body, from the nervous system. So, you want to be relieved of the fact that you have not violated God when it comes to nervous symptoms, but you also want to know what the solution is, right? That's what this, this broadcast is all about. And the solution is to apply the principles of God and the commands of Christ and actually do what Christ said to do. I've quoted to you at length on these broadcasts, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now that's what you want, a sound mind, power in your life. You don't want to be victimized by your nervous symptoms, by panic attacks, by depression, by mental health disorders. And Christ came to set you free, just as he set me free. He's come to set us free. The scriptures say, Jesus said, 
and whom the Son sets free is free indeed. All right, so what I'm proposing and what I've discovered on my own throughout the years is you downsize your fear of death, your fear of this life, your fear of what's going to happen in America, what's going to happen with our government. And let me say something parenthetical here as well. It doesn't mean we sit around not doing anything. Uh, Jesus also said, occupy till I come, which means, occupy means to trade and to do business, means to work. So while we're working on solutions for the planet, for our country, for the government, we don't want to get into, fall into panic and hyper anxiety and stress or be found in a fetal position in the closet somewhere from uh, depression and the stress of life. Christ came to relieve us of those type of fears. And how do we get there? We trade them in. We downsize and we accept the fear of the Lord. I said, it's evident when someone has the fear of the Lord, just you watch their behavior. You see, there's many things they will not do because that's a violation of principle, of God's principles. And also, there are things that they do that the average person doesn't do. They pray. They read the Word, the Word, the word of God, the Bible. They, they memorize it. They uh, speak often about God, one to another, and so on. So it's pretty evident who has the fear of the Lord, which is a good thing. By the way, I challenge you, if you don't know much about it, this, this doctrine of the fear of the Lord, look it up, um, which is easy to do nowadays. Just look it up in, um, you know, you have a Bible app, or you can do it right online. And just type in fear of the Lord, and look at the verses. Most of them are in the book of Proverbs, a couple in Psalms. And every, in every single case, every single one, there's something good attached to the fear of the Lord. Is it a paradox? I think only to what I would say a mind that is not initiated to A, the obvious, and B, more importantly, to what the, the Bible reveals about this blessing of knowing God in what is called the fear of the Lord. It's not what people think. It's not what it would seem on the surface fear of God implies. We're not, we're not um, walking around all day long. Now, some of us were taught this as children, but we're not walking around all day long, and God is just simply waiting for us to make one mistake, and then there comes the, the judgment. That's not the fear of the Lord. That's anxiety. When you're living for God, you're going to find that God's blessing as this, again, the book says, uh, Proverbs states, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Let me say this, hasten to say this as well. Let's not continually associate that word rich with money. Some people have money, some Christians, you know, they have money and some don't. And some, like myself, just, just have enough to get by. That's all I need. I've been getting by for a long time, and, well, the clock is kind of running out on me anyway, so... Uh, what else? How much else do you need? All right. To to summarize, the the fear of the Lord is one one thing, and you can downsize all the other fears, which are not good. They're harmful: anxiety attacks, panic attacks, being constantly nervous and worried and stressed and all that. You already know from experience is not a good thing. But one of the verses in Proverbs that talks about the fear of the Lord, it says that it's clean. That the fear of the Lord brings blessings. Again, you could look it up for yourself. Most of these verses are in the book of Proverbs and also in the in a couple of the Psalms. Every time you hear that expression, the fear of the Lord, it is there is a blessing attached to it. And this, in its utter simplicity, is the way that we overcome anxiety, panic, depression, and mental health disorders. If you don't believe me, try it. Trust God. Let me pray for you today. Father God, I just ask you today to touch my friends and help them to understand this, what I'm speaking about today, how to downsize their fears to just one, and give them the deliverance that you, de you desire to give them from their anxieties, from their fears, from their depressions and their oppressions. And I pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, well, the rain held off so far, 
and as always I give you an exhortation if this is your first time watching if this is a small group of people I think we have like a hundred and uh, well we had 170 I noticed that it dropped to 169 so someone someone flew the coop uh, which is uh, so it's fine it's okay I told you I'm good with the thumbs up I'm good with the thumbs down it doesn't really affect me a whole lot of course I like thumbs up so I'm asking you for a thumbs up uh, it would be good to know if you're understanding what I'm saying give me a thumbs up leave me a comment if you're really not getting the concepts that I'm trying to put in a 20 minute video which is very difficult by the way uh, yeah I could give you a, a, a punch list of do this this that but you know it's just not it's not my style and just I don't I don't do that I'm trying to explain things to you and it takes a, I told you this last year when you were if you were with me it takes a long time to go through the dynamics here. It's going to be a long haul. Anyway, if you're interested in joining our little group, it's a tight little group, and uh, it's a good group, and subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the notification button as well. All right. God willing, I'll see you again tomorrow. And I do pray that God, that you would be able to say, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. God bless, and I'll see you again tomorrow.